Okay, for this screencast, we are going to do um, the heat uh, advection equation. Uh, so here we go, heat equation. Uh, and I'm going to do, uh, what do I want to call this? Uh, finite difference example. Okay, so suppose you have the equation du, or sorry, dt, uh, yeah, that's fine, dt dt equals d squared t dx squared. So it's a uh, time derivative, and obviously the, these are these are partial derivatives. Um, so so t is the temperature, temperature, and it is a function of x and t. So there is a time derivative, time derivative equal to a uh, second spatial derivative. And so the finite difference method says that t of, and let's use this notation here, x and t, so it'll be t of x comma t plus dt minus t of x comma t, all of this divided by dt is equal to the second derivative. And so the, the, um, the using first order finite differencing, you're going to get uh, t of x plus dx minus 2 times t of x, oh, and I forgot the comma t, x comma t plus t of x minus 1 comma t all over dx squared, okay? Um, let's make sure that that's right. Um, I'm going to pause it and just make sure. Okay, I went and checked my notes. That's correct. Um, here it is. Ti plus 1 minus 2 Ti plus Ti minus 1 over delta x squared. This is a different heat equation, but uh, they're very related. Okay, so then the, the idea is, is we want to propagate this system in time. So basically what we do is we solve, I hate this, solve for T of x comma T plus dT. And so that's going to equal... Uh, if you look at everything, you're going to get a, uh, a dt over um, dx squared. Oh, you know what? I forgot the uh, heat advection constant. I'm going to call it k, k times. And so there's going to be a, uh, a k here. And so it'll be k times dt times um, this guy. I'm just going to copy it. Boom. Okay. And then we have to bring this guy to the other side. So you're going to get a t of x comma t plus uh, that there. Okay. Oh, I did not like that. All right, cool. So now, seriously? Come on. I hate this, like, word wrap. I'll turn that off later. Okay, so now we have to define all of our, all of our variables in here. Okay, so um, first we need the uh, length of the pipe. So I'm going to just say L is 10. Um, we need the number of elements and number of elements and so I'm going to say n equals 10 for now uh, it's not really a big deal uh, and then we need to discretize our x space so x vec is going to be lin space 0 to l comma n and so that means I'm going to start at 0 uh, increment to L and the length of the vector is N. Okay, um, then we need to discretize time. So we have T vec is, and I'm going to do, I'm going to use the colon operator. I'm going to say 0 dt to, uh, for, I don't know, 10 seconds. And so we need to define dt. So dt is an interesting thing here. So first I'm going to define dx. And dx equals x vec of 2 minus x vec of 1. That's just a consequence of the lin space command. And then in order to, find my, to define my dt, I'm going to look up the stability criterion uh, for uh, d for dt, I think it's uh, I forget what it's called. It's like car carne no no carne yeah carnahan at all 
he says that the system is stable if delta t is less than or equal to delta x squared over 2k. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually set dt equal to half of dx squared uh, over 2 times k. And I need to define k too. So I need, oh, I did it again. So uh, heat constant. It's like heat capacitance. I'm an aerospace engineer, by the way. I don't know about heat. I just teach numerical methods. Uh, I'm going to call it two. Uh, it doesn't really matter. OK, uh, I think we have everything we need. Uh, oh, not quite. We need initial conditions for the temperature of the pipe. OK, so T, I'm going to call this a matrix. I'm going to make this zeros. And looking at how we define it, x is the first variable. So that's the number of rows. So I'm going to do length of x vec length of t vec and so basically the initial conditions so I'm gonna move this up here and say allocate memory for t for temperature and so the reason why the number of rows is the x vec is because here in my notation the first call is x and so that means that's the number of rows and then the number of columns is gonna be length of t just because of my notation up here so my initial conditions, I'm actually going to assume that the, uh, the left end of the, of the pipe, I'm going to say Tmat of 1 comma all equals 200. So that means the left end of the pipe is 200 degrees. Um, this is also a boundary condition. Okay, and I'm going to say Tmat of end comma all equals 200. I'm going to say the right, actually, I'm going to say this is a, let's say this is a 150 to give it a little different. The right end of the pipe is 150 degrees. Do I have an error there? It doesn't like it. Okay. And that's another B boundary condition. Okay. Um, here we're going to integrate using uh, Euler's and FDM put together. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to plot this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say xxtt equals mesh grid of uh, xvec comma tvec. And then I'm going to mesh xxtt um, tmat. And then I'm going to do, let's see, um, x label is going to be uh, x coordinate in meters. The y label is going to be the y coordinate in seconds. Oh, which the y coordinate is time. And then the z label is going to be the temperature. Temperature, and I, I'll just say Fahrenheit. Units don't really matter. Uh, I'm going to hit F5 here. Um, it's going to give me an error because the matrix dimensions must agree, of course. Okay, so we're going to put a broke point in here. I'm going to hit go. Let's see, x vec is a 1 by 10, t vec is a 1 by 65, x is a 65 by 10. Tmat is a 10 by 65. Okay, so I, I hate I, I'm, I hate how it does this, but I'm pretty sure you just have to do this. I think it has like a built, like I think mesh grid has like a built in order. There we go. Okay, cool. So you can see the uh, x coordinate. So the left end here, uh, hopefully you can see my mouse. The left end is, is uh, pegged at 200 degrees as a function of time for 10 seconds. Here's the x coordinate. The right end is pegged at, let's put a little cursor down here, it is pegged at 150 degrees. So that's all done. Um, so now we can integrate. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to say for IDX, or sorry, TDX equals 1 to length of TVEC minus 1. And the reason why you have to do minus 1 is because the integrator integrates to TDX plus 1. And so you want to go to length of T minus 1. Okay, so Euler's method is this here. Done. I'm going to copy and paste that. Okay, but we need to change a few things. So it's it's TDX plus 1 now. It's uh, TDX, DT, and DX squared is all good. Um, let's see, this is TDX. This is TDX, TDX. And so now what do we do with the uh, x coordinate here? And so that's that's where this comes a little complicated. You actually have to have a, um, I'm going to call it idx is one to length 
of x vec. And here's where things get a little weird. You have to start at 2 because the first boundary condition doesn't change. And you have to go to length minus 1 because, again, the end point doesn't change either. And so now we can change all of our x's to idx's, x's to idx's, x to idx. Instead of dx, it's plus 1, idx, idx, minus 1. Oh, it looks like I, that was actually a typo up there. That should be minus dx. My notation is a, a little bit off here. See, up here, this is math notation. Down here, this is uh, increment notation. And it looks like t appears to change size, and that's because it's a typo, t mat. So I need to change all these t's to t mats. OK, if we did everything correctly, that should be it. Um, I really hope that worked. Boom, look at that. That's pretty awesome. So uh, that's absolutely beautiful. Um, there's the initial condition down here. The pipe is 0. These are fixed at 200 and 150, so the pipe slowly heats up until it reaches uh, equilibrium here. Now, if you recall, well, there's a couple things we can talk about. Um, if you recall, this is my time step here. If I make this just exactly equal to that, everything's still okay. There's a little weirdness happening here, but watch what happens if I make this 1.1. Uh -oh. Okay, see now look at look at what's happening. The, this is really starting to get uh, interesting. Um, let's put a uh, clear CLC close all here, and then let's just let's just go for broke here. Make it a two. Hit F five. Boom. The whole thing blew up. Ten to the eighth. Um, let's do. Let's go slower. One point two. That already blew up. So and then one point one is there. So you have you have limits on what you can make your time step here. And so that, again, that's uh, Carnahan uh, et al. 1969. That was a long time ago when this, uh, this method came, came about. Um, there's other better methods called uh, the Crank-Nicholson method and things like that. But in another video, I'm going to show you how to use uh, RK4 uh, in conjunction with finite difference instead of using Euler's method. And it'll make the uh, uh, accuracy a lot better and you can increase that time step. Again, so let's do a little a little summary. So here's my uh, partial uh, differential equation, dt. Uh, I can't do a partial in, in MATLAB, so I just put a straight d, a discrete derivative, but that's fine. So you have a first derivative of time equals some heat capacitant constant times the uh, second derivative in space. Temperature is a function of uh, space and time. You use the uh, first order differentiation to approximate your derivative. So you have your time derivative here. You have your spatial derivative here. You solve for t of x, t plus dt, and then you define all your constants, k, l, n. Um, you have your x vector here, which is using a lint space command. I pull dx out of that to get that. Um, and then I have dt, which makes my uh, time vector, or sorry, which makes my uh, time step, which is um, a criteria based on stability. And then I have my t vec, I just go to 10 seconds, and then I make my t mat, which is length of x vec uh, rows and then t vec columns. I create my boundary conditions here. And then I have an outside for loop for time and then an inside for loop for space. And then I uh, mesh it and plot it and hit play. There you go. So you can change all of this. You can do like 100 elements and your computer will, at least mine, will probably crash. Um, that looks really pretty. It's like a little rainbow. What does this mean? Anyway, good luck. Uh, look forward to the uh, follow-up video. Uh, should be good. Good luck.